Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Combat Craig, and today I want to talk about making sure you have a ICD-10 code, diagnostic code associated with the disability you're trying to get rated or you're filing a claim for. If it doesn't have a diagnostic code on the VA's list, right, the VA does things one way and then the rest of the world um, does it the right way. So you have to get into their world and their diagnostic codes and what they rate and what they don't. You want to make sure that if you're filing a disability claim, you want to get rated for something, it's rateable and it's a diagnostic code that the VA recognizes. I have an example here. I got this screenshot and basically what we have is a TBI claim and then we're trying to hook secondaries off of the TBI. So just kind of before we even start, the VA loves to combine TBI symptoms and mental health symptoms together. Why do they do this? Because they don't have to pay as much money. If you have a separate TBI rating and a separate mental health rating, just, just between those two, you could be well over 100% into the special monthly compensations. Way up if you're at a SMCT or SMCR2. So... If there is a way for them to combine it and pay less money, that's going to happen. So, you know, I'm showing these examples so we don't make it easy for them. So let's take a look at this. So this claim was already filed, so there's nothing to do now. You already made your move. So the next move is wait for them to send you to a bunch of CNP exams, get a rating decision letter, and then you'll be able to figure out if you want to appeal, file a new claim, like uh, this whole thing wasn't a good idea, or appeal parts of it. You could do whatever you want to do. But at this point, you've already done your part. Now you have to wait for them to do their part. And that's kind of another part of this. We're going to wait five or six months for the VA to do what they do. The more we could tee this up and make it easier so we understand what might may potentially happen, the better it's going to be for you. So we have headache secondary to TBI, fatigue secondary to TBI, light sensitivity secondary to TBI, lack of focus secondary to TBI, memory loss secondary to TBI, loss of concentration secondary to TBI, depression secondary to TBI, anxiety secondary to TBI, agitation secondary to TBI. So on uh, my first impression here, I'm thinking, I see two things that they diagnose, three things that they diagnose, right? Headaches, um, that's 8,100. Depression, let's call it major depressive disorder, anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder, and then fatigue. I'm not sure what the light sensitivity is. Maybe that's associated with the headaches, so that needs to be teased out, but, but that's a good example. So migraines and TBIs are, you know, interwoven a lot too. So you want to make sure that you have your doctor put all the TBI bucket stuff over here and all the migraine stuff or headache stuff over here. If you leave it up to the VA, they're just going to combine them because they don't want to pay. Moving on, lack of focus, memory loss, loss of concentration. I'm not sure about agitation. I think that's also a mental health symptom. These are all symptoms of mental health conditions. So they can all be attributed to depression, anxiety, or there's about 150 mental health conditions the VA recognizes and rates. So in this particular situation, you, you may even, you know, going back a little farther, you may even already have a mental health rating. So this is a moot point because if you're trying to increase your mental health rating, it comes down to your levels of social and occupational impairment, not how much stuff you can stick against and onto your mental health rating. You get one and it's how much does it affect your work and your social life? Not here's 30 symptoms. You can have one symptom. If they severely limit your social and your work life, 100%. 30 of them that barely or you don't even address your social and your work life, you're going to stay the same. So another little rabbit hole to, to think about here. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my boot camp at combatcraig.com. So let's take a look at the mental health DBQ here. And I'll kind of scroll through parts of it with you so you can check it out. So... Section one here on the mental health DBQ is diagnosis. So this is mental disorder diagnosis number one and the ICD code. So this is where you would want to have your doctor fill it out and put in major depressive disorder. Yes, the VA rates it. Yes, the VA recognizes it and the ICD code along with it. And then um, number two would be anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder, and then the ICD code. And that's something you want your doctor to do. If you keep scrolling down here, 
Um, we have number two, differentiation of symptoms. Number three, you have occupational and social impairment. This is where your rating comes from, period. This is the most important box on a mental health thing. If it's not occupational and social impairment, you're not going to get the rating you're going after. The more socially and occupationally impaired you are, the higher the rating. You have a 3C here. If a diagnosis of TBI exists, is it possible to differentiate which occupational and social impairment indicated above is caused by the TBI? This is where you definitely want your doctor to pull these things apart. I talk about pulling apart TBI mental health symptoms a lot on here, and I know you guys have questions. Like, it's literally on the DBQ. Get your doctor to do it. Uh, I can't do it. Then you might want to think about filing a claim for something different. If your doctor will not get on board with separating this stuff, it's you're not going to get a higher rating if they're just going to combine them. So if we go down to number three here and look at symptoms, depressed mood, anxiety. So these can be both things. That's why it's good to get a diagnosis for one of them. You know, you may have depression, but you get a little bit of anxiety or something of that nature. But when you look at the panic attacks, mild memory loss, let's see what else is on this uh, list here. Lack of focus, um, loss, lack of con concentration, agitation. If you look through this symptoms category on the mental health DBQ, you're gonna see all these things. These things are all symptoms with the exception of, let's say that depressed mood is actual depression and you have it listed on your DBQ, as major depressive disorder, or there's a couple other ones. And then anxiety, it'll just be a checkbox on here. It's just gonna be a symptom of something else, unless your doctor, your mental health doctor, pulls it out, writes it down, DBQ, and it's like, yeah, I hereby diagnose combat Greg with generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, and um, that's what I can speak to on the mental health part. Um, this other doctor over here will take it from here because he's good with the uh, TBI stuff. So that may or may not be a different doctor. I'm pretty sure it is. Kind of depends on the situation and what you have going on with your claim. If you need medical evidence, there's an email address to my med team. Hit them up. See if they could help you out. Kind of to bring it all back around here. Make sure you understand what you're doing before you file your claim because it, you're going to thank me and it's going to save you a bunch of time. If the result is I was denied anyway, sorry about that. Keep fighting. Um, I'm telling you right now, this one is not going to come out um, the way you're hoping it is. Again, we can't change gears after we hit the submit button. That's the legal process. We can change all the gears we want before we file the claim. Afterwards, now we're in the appeals process and waiting for the VA to basically react. So, if you're, you know, if you have a TBI and uh, mental health conditions and you're thinking about filing a claim and you haven't quite hit that submit button yet, dig into this stuff. Go figure out what DBQs are. They're called disability benefits questionnaires. They will be filled out on you. You will have a CNP exam. All this is unavoidable. You're going to go at all this stuff head on. But the more you understand about what you're doing, how this is a diagnosis of this, but my suspiciousness and my lack of memory is a symptom of that. The more you understand that, the more you're going to be able to tell a clear story when you get to your CNP exam and anytime you talk to any VA employee for the rest of your life because it's your story. That's you, you get your rating and that's your story and you stick with your story. You don't need to change it around. So wanted to throw this out there. Hope this veteran gets a good rating. I don't think it's going to happen. This is a perfect example of a mishmash of pyramiding issues. Um, hope it's not. We'll find out when, uh, when the rating comes back. Again, check out my boot camp if you want to learn more about the VA claims process. And if you need medical evidence, this is a perfect example. When I say, do you need medical evidence? You need a doctor to pull this stuff apart. My med team can pull this stuff apart for you because they're doctors and they know how to do this. And if you look at it, it's checkboxes, right? So um, I could do this, but I'll have the power of the pen. So med team has the power of the pen. That's what you need. Any doctor with the power of the pen that's willing to pull your symptoms apart so you get the right rating, that's the way you want to go at it. I'll see you in the next video.